اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا اللهم ارحمنا اللهم ارحمنا جلينا اللهم افتح علينا حكمتك وانشر علينا رحمتك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ويرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه ويرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا جذنابه وصل اللهم على محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وإتباعه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين. So we have studied Ali Imran. We have been studying Ali Imran. Verse seven, which is it's a very, very, if you like, deeply studied verse, and caused a lot of. Um, if uh, differences of opinions among scholars. So, and also very important, if anybody is interested in understanding the Quran. If we want to understand the Quran, we have to understand this verse first. Of course, uh, it is not an easy job, but uh, we, uh, I think, spent one session, one, one class, to understand, uh, to start the discussion. So the verse says, who's going to read the verse? Just a gen general idea. Would you like to read any of you? The verse? Anybody? Yep. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Bismillahir rahmanir rahim Huwa alladhi anzala alayka alkitaba minhu ayatum muhkamatun hunna um الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه بارتغاء الفتنة وبارتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أولو الألباب صدق الله لا I think, yeah, I'm, there are various. This yeah. is a question actually related. Like, there are copies of the Quran where they put that you have to stop, but copies where they don't put that you have to stop. Okay, that's what the discussion about. Okay. <laughs> we will discuss it. <clears throat> Who would like to read the English translation? Just to get a general idea to refresh our minds. Yeah, and uh, get an idea, general idea, what we are going to talk about. Anybody who knows English? Do you not? Okay. <laughs> if you want. Yeah, please, a little bit. He it is who has sent down to you the book containing verses that are fundamental, and these are the essence of the book, as well as others that are allegorical. Now those whose hearts are given to swerving from the truth go after that part of the book, which has been expressed in allegory, seeking out confusion and seeking to give it their own interpretation. But none save God knows its interpretation. Hence, those who are deeply rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it, the whole of it is from our Lord, albeit none takes this to heart, save those who are endowed with insight. Hmm. Okay. I think a general introduction we did last, uh, in the last class, inshallah. Let's go now, uh, studying bit by bit, phrase by phrase. وَالَّذِي أَنْزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ هُنَّ أُمُّ الْكِتَابِ Now, it is who he has sent down and revealed to you the book containing verses that are fundamental, which is the original word is muhkama. Uh, and these are the essence of the book. Now, <clears throat> I remember vaguely, it was uh, before the winter break that we talked about um, he, it is who has sent the book. Who is it? He, it's who. 
he sent down to you the book. Why we are going to talk about this aspect of the matter by definition. We are not going to prove it or look for the evidence for it, but by definition. Quran itself, by definition, claims to be what? By, it says, I am what? <coughs> Anybody? Sent by Allah. Yeah, but um, there is another way of, shorter way of saying it. The word of the creator. The word of the creator. Ah. It is who he has revealed means whatever you think of the creator of this universe is speaking. Mm. It's a big claim. How can I make sure? Right? This is another subject. But by definition, we will try to see whether there is a consistency in the book which says, I am the word of the creator, and we will read it as the word of the creator and see whether it is consistent, it is approvable, it is understandable, or not. We will see. For the moment, we, it is not our subject, but we will bear in mind that we are going to talk about this verse by definition. Since the Quran says, I am the word of the creator, it's a beautiful expression. By the way, what you said wasn't wrong. <laughs> Sent by Allah with the word of the creator. Because by definition, Allah is the creator of the universe and in, is the creator of the human being. All right, and he says uh, in itself, I am as the creator of the universe, including the human being, human beings, speaking to you and saying that this, uh, this book contains, well, from here, what? this book contains verses that are fundamental, fundamental. And these are the essence of the book. What are we expecting from these fundamentals? But again, by definition, we are not here today. We can do it in another time to prove, bring evidence that the Quran is the word of the creator. No, not today. Not at this session, at this, at this class. Maybe later on, we'll see if we, if we need it. For the moment, we will see the consistency of this, this, this verse with its own claim. Own claim means I am the word of the creator. So he's, he, the word of the creator tells me that <clears throat> There are some verses in it which are fundamental. It means these are the essence of this book. What are you expecting to be the essence of the book? What so the book is the word of the creator. What are we <coughs> expecting from the word of the creator to be the essence of it is message? What is the, what is it? What can it be? What can it be? Essence of, yes? Yeah? A purpose. Purpose of what? Our lives. Sorry? Purpose of being here. Purpose of <clears throat> being in this world. From the perspective of, not according to my life in New York, but according to? Existence. The yeah, existence, the creator who gave me my existence. So I, I am expecting from this speech to reveal to me the purpose of my existence. But it means the creator tells me that I am going to reveal the purpose of your existence. Because I created you, I know. So purpose of your existence, do you think the purpose of your existence can ever be 
Be careful, very, very careful. Can ever be, for example, to get a degree from the university? And professionally, uh, you get a good profession? Purpose of your existence. I, we are not talking about the means of living in this world. According to the conditions of this world. What is the purpose of your existence? As far as your creators revealing this secret to you is concerned. Something to do with your real existence. Why are you here? Right? When you, as soon as you ask the question, these are uh, 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 the points never should be <coughs> neglected. Never. As soon as you ask the question, why am I here? The answer is expected to come from my creator, and my creator will reveal what? His purpose, his intention to create me in creating me. So as soon as we start talking about the creator, his intention, his purpose, right? What are we talking about? Are we talking about something to do with this universe? The source of the, the creator's intention is something to do with light. It means with the creator, which is or who is So, as soon as uh, the text starts speaking, speaking, from the speaker's perspective, from the speaker's perspective, it should be something to do with not this world, but the source of the existence of this world. So, Muhkamat means here fundamental verses. The, es the uh, essence of the book means all the news, news we receive as far as the gods dis uh, disclosing himself, revealing himself is concerned. It means for example, the knowledge about himself, knowledge about the, uh, another kind of creation in the hereafter it is called. The Quran says there will be another life, another uh, creation, or a new creation which we have never experienced in this world, going beyond this universe. So these are the fundamentals. These are the essence of the book. So if the Quran says, God knows everything, what is this? Essence of the book. God is revealing his own attribute as the all-knowing one. Right? So that it's, uh, God says, I have created angels as well everywhere. I look at the bird and I don't see the angels here. Oh, there are other types of creation. I have to be aware of it. This is essence of the book. These are essence of the, this is the essence of the book, these verses, right? Anything about the word of unseen, it means about the outside of this universe is essence of the Quran. 
So what are we going to do with this essence? The Quran will tell us why uh, the Quran itself makes the dis distinction between the two types of verses within itself. One of them is, uh, one, one type <laughs> consists the essence of the book and related to the unseen world. It means not observable, not touchable, not experiential world or experienceable world, right? This is muhkamat. So what are we going to do with this? It, it will tell us what, well, with this muhkamat verses, okay? Mm. Now, there are some notes here. That, can somebody read it? The notes, if... Um, slowly, who, who would like to read, somebody? Anybody who dares to read so that we can hear his or her voice? Yes, please. The fundamental verses, ayat muhtamat, are described as the essence of the book, Umm al-Kitab, because they comprise the fundamental principles underlying its message, and, in particular, its ethical and social teachings. And it is only on the basis of these clearly enunciated principles that the allegorical passages can be correctly interpreted. Oh. Can you read the last piece? But we can talk about it, okay? All the fundamentals there in the essence of the book, which are muhtama. But it is only on the basis of these clearly enunciated principles that the allegory, allegorical passages can be correctly interpreted. That's very important. <coughs> Why? Do you understand the importance of it? The main purpose that God speaks to me, not to teach me what to eat during the, uh, my dinner or when I am having my dinner, the, the main purpose of the Creator to teach me that the sun is moving. You know, we will study that. It's running in its own um, orbit. Okay, I can see it. Oh, yeah, the sun is running or the world is uh, rotating, whatever. I can experience that. But when the allegorical uh, verses are mentioned, the muhkamat, the fundamentals, the essence of the verses, will be the foundation of my understanding that I will understand the allegorical verses according to the main essence of the verses, the essence of the book. So, shall I tell you a very important, very important, and I, I, I am emphasize on it, extremely <coughs> important point here. If you see that, for example, God says, I created the mountains. All right? I look at the mountain. Then, that's the mountain I can see. All right? I will say, the fundamentals of the Quran, the book, is to give me news about the world that I don't know, about the, the aspect of the creation that I don't know, I, can, I don't experience. So I have to interpret this mutashabihat, okay, allegorical verses, we will, we will talk about that, why these verses are allegorical. These allegorical verses should be, must be interpreted within the conditions of the fundamental verses. So, I know the mountains. <coughs> I'm just talking about the mountains to me. What is it to do with the purpose of the speech of God there? What is it to do with it? But 
for, the, for example, it says, let's say, the sun is moving. Uh, excuse me, uh, I can see that the sun is moving. I don't want God to tell me because I'm experiencing that. So I would say, oh, the Quran itself says, I have two kinds of verses. Some of them are essence of the speech, the, the book. Some of them are allegorical, and the allegorical verses, by definition, need to be interpreted. Yes? But how am I going to interpret these allegorical verses according to Muhkamat, which means according to the fundamental verses. Fundamental verses, the content of the fundamental verses were, we, we discussed, or are, in reality, to give me guidance about what I don't know. So if, if there is a verse, says, for example, Washamsi, I swear by the sun. Okay. The sun is there. Why does the speaker, who is the creator of the world, swears or makes an oath or takes a witness from the sun? Said by sun by the sun. Blah 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 says something. What is, what is wrong with the sun? Or what is important with the sun? It must be important from the point of view of fundamental verses, the content of the fundamental verses. Do you follow me now? Very, very important these are. So I have to look at the <laughs> you want me to do it for you? Yeah, I, you can. Uh, let's say it's just a minute. Okay. Is it Arubebe? Yeah. I I have to look at the sun because the Creator is talking about the sun, which I, it is obvious to me. In order to definitely tell me something I don't know, it means very simple, very simple. It means he's talking about the sun that I know, not, uh, not to teach me something about the sun that I, I know, but about the aspect of the sun that I don't know. Otherwise, there is no reason for God to tell me or talk about the sun. Because I, I know the sun, the sun is there, but if God draws my attention to the sun, it must be for the purpose of what? Drawing my attention to the fundamentals of the book. It means the essence of the book. What was the essence of the book? Trying to do, teaching me the aspect of my existence which looks to the divine looks to the unseen world, which looks to the absolute world. So when I look at the sun, what am I expected to do? <coughs> if you, if Tarek tells me that, Ali, look at the sun, I say, huh, I looked at it, okay. <laughs> so what happened? Well, I looked at it, it's there, yeah. But if God tells me, Ali, but the creator, look at the sun. Should I take the same sentence in, at the same level for the same purpose? God tells me, look at the sun. Why does God speak to me? He speaks to me to teach me what I don't know. <clears throat> right? Which speaks to me, which I don't know. So if God tells me, Look at the sun, I will say, I have to look at the sun in order to understand something which is not visible to me. God is says, the creator says, when you look at the sun, for the purpose of knowing something 
through observing the sun, which will take me to the world of unseen. It means the world that I don't know. So the Turks telling me, look at the sun, is completely different from God's telling me, look at the sun. We, I remember that we gave this example. If somebody comes here, and for example, what was the name of this beautiful girl? Ivan, yes, Ivan. Ivan says, come on, everybody, get out of this room. What do we say? <laughs> we just laugh. Say, oh, good girl, mashallah. We, love, we all love you. And Ivan, you are a beautiful girl. But we said, if Imam Khalid comes there, tells me, I take it differently. Right? I can think differently. For example, let's say it is at 9 o'clock is the time today to close this room, all right? So if Imam Khalid comes here, let's say it's not 9 yet, but if Imam Khalid comes here and says, Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters, it is 9 o'clock. <laughs> what does it mean? We say, yeah, it's 9 o'clock. My wife says that. Here, there is a uh, clock there. It says 9 o'clock. Are you stupid? Just to let me know what I can already know. But with the authority that he has. All right? And says it is 9 o'clock. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, can you leave the room now? It's already time is up. It means, yeah? When, but look, Imam Khalid said, it is 9 o'clock. When it is 9 o'clock, of course. So that's why, uh, according to the, to the authority of the speaker, we have to interpret the obvious thing within, obvious, it's 9 o'clock, within the authority of the speaker and interpret it. Definitely, as it says here, the clearly enunciated principles that are the allegorical pas passages can be correctly interpreted. So, for example, if uh, a, a, man, a man says, it is nine o'clock, he say, yes, mashallah. I think she is bored, she wants to go. Well, or to take her father and go. But when Khalid says, we have to move. Because if something is obvious for me without the creator of the universe giving me an, any extra information <coughs> and talking about the obvious matter for me, I have to interpret it according to the capacity of the creator. We have to understand. Just one sentence I will say, uh, in order not to be critical for anybody, etc. This point is greatly missing from the eyes of those people who study the Quran. Not many people are paying attention to this aspect. So very be, be careful. That I'm not criticizing anyone, but just trying to uh, draw, trying to draw your attention that this point is extremely important, and you may not find it everywhere. If you miss this point, you cannot benefit from the Quran. So you start when the Quran said, "Washamsi." By the sun, you start talking about the sun itself. Then it's a huge star that produces or emits such and such amount of energy, the source of something. You start talking about the sun, and God says, come on, I didn't tell you. Look at the sun in order to study the sun itself but draw a meaning or sign, look at the sun as a sign, to extract some meaning pointing to the purpose that I speak to you. What was the purpose that God speaks to me? To teach me what I don't know in this world. 
right? That's why it is this, this sentence is extremely in, important. I will read it again from here or from there. It is only, it is only on the basis of these clearly enunciated principles, which are mukama, all right? These clearly enunci enunciated principles that the allegorical, <coughs> allegorical passages can be correctly interpreted. That is extremely important in when you, if you, if anybody wants to understand. Okay, the, of course we have covered somehow the following, we have already talked about it because muhkamat necessarily makes us talk about mutashabihat, the fundamental, as well as others that are allegorical mutashabihat. Of course, there are two types of verses in the Quran. It is not difficult now. Okay. Okay, there are some. And now, one thing we have to cover, the Quran itself insistently, constantly says, whatever we created in the world is a sign. Is it? Sign to what? Sign to the, to its, to the qualities of its creator, right? Did you get this? Quran itself says this. Whatever is created, it, it means, it means within your observation that you can understand, you can observe, you can analyze, you can study. These are created, given existence, in order to be a sign to the absolute world. To the absolute world. It means to the qualities of the creator. Qualities of it is creator. So if the Quran mentions about anything here, the typical example we have been talking about is the sun, sun when the, when the Quran draws uh, my attention to the sun, or the very famous, everybody knows that, to the fig, or to the olive, I have to say, these are created according to the teachings of the Quran, because we are looking uh, uh, at the consistency of the Quran within itself. So these are signs. Signs to what? that everything is a sign pointing to the qualities of its creator. Is there anything in the world which is not a sign, doesn't point to the qualities of its creator? No. Why? The Quran itself declares that, look, as a creator, I am telling you, every quality which is worth being praised. Praise means I am done very well. I am <coughs> done in an order. I am done with a perfect purpose. I am done with perfect wisdom. They all say pointing to their creator. That's why all praise is or belongs to their creator. If you say, oh, this carpet is very nice, soft. Well, it's not very soft. But anyway, let's say soft for the sake of argument. So it's very soft, it's good. Ah, uh, the softness points to the quality of the creator that he enabled this carpet to be soft. So as soon as I, I say that this, this carpet is soft, it means it is created with this quality, and the creator 
of the carpet, that's a mat, but doesn't matter, the creator given existence, from existence perspective we are studying, created the softness. So this softness, creating something with soft quality, is the, uh, is the creation realized by the creator of the universe. No one can create softness. It is there, we can obtain it, but it's created by God. Through our free will, we can obtain it. So, uh, whatever the quantity we talk about it, uh, is a sign to the quality of this creator, saying that, for example, if you study, uh, what, for example, in, uh, a particle, an atom, for example, the, all the qualities we can <coughs> observe in the existence of the quality points to the qualities of its creator, but when it, is, when it is related to the creator, we understand that the creator's quality must be absolute so he can give existence to that particular quality which did not exist by itself. So it is given existence. So whoever gave the existence to that particular particle or atom is pointing to the absolute quality of the creator who gave existence to that particular particle. Yeah. So why can't softness exist without God? No, you cannot uh, explain the existence of softness, whatever the qualities you talk about is beauty, softness, the order, balance, just, wisdom, whatever. Existence, 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 but something does not exist <laughs> and now it exists, which means that the uh, logical conclusion, some source, a source has given existence to this quality. It means the, it cannot create <coughs> itself. <coughs> That is logical. We have to be we have to be aware of it. Although this is not uh, really directly related to the content of today's discussion, but this is very essential because it is always missing from our views. It always misses really if we are not careful. Nothing can be the source of its own existence. That is a logical conclusion. Do you understand? For example, can you be the reason for your own existence? Can you be the cause of your own existence? You didn't exist. How can you be the cause of your own existence? You need to exist. So that's what we have to always bear in mind that existence needs explanations. But no one can prove and demonstrate that the things are existing by themselves. They are always, <coughs> their existence have, has been preferred to their non-existence. If something exists, definitely we have to ask this question. What was the cause for this thing, whatever it is, as the Quran says, kulla shaykh, every single thing to exist to prefer its existence to its non-existence. When you say softness, it's, some, it's a phenomenon, right? It's a phenomenon. It exists. Who preferred, what preferred its existence to its non-existence? We have to ask this question. We keep repeating this sentence in our discussions that existence cannot, should not, be taken for granted. Everything we have to ask the question. What is the reason for this to exist? But anything. So softness cannot be its own creator. Softness cannot decide by itself <coughs> that I will exist. Because there is no power no quality that we can observe in the being of this quality. 
softened by. It is given. Right? That's why. So, let's go back. Mutashabihat, about in anything which is mentioned in the Quran, which is observable and which, is, uh, which we can experience, <coughs> are signs to the qualities of their Creator. Right? Signs to the qualities of their Creator. When the Quran mentions about something which is allegorical. Why allegorical? Because in itself doesn't mean anything as far as the purpose of the speech of, the, of God in the Quran. The word of God. By definition, we are talking by definition. <coughs> right? This is very important. This, uh, this, we have to really relate to this topic to the purpose of the Qur'an. So the Qur'an says, I'm going to give you, I want to teach you what you don't know. So when, when I don't know, what I don't know is what is hype or what this universe points to as, as a sign. Right? So I have to understand that the Om Bihar needs to be interpreted according to the essence of the Quran, essence of the book. So when the Quran says, uh, for example, take notes of the fig, or uh, I take witness of the fig, or, uh, or the sun, or the moon, or the night, or a day, or daylight, whatever there are, or the mountains, the, the earth, and the sky, or the, there are hundreds of different examples given in the Quran. The fact that you have been created in in pairs, for example. So look at them. They use as signs. Look at them as signs. Signs to? Signs to the unseen world. Pointing to the qualities of the unseen world. Teaching us what the qualities of the unseen world are. Right? It's very simple, but uh, we have to uh, make it very simple. So anything clear and obvious for me that I, by definition, don't need God to reveal the scripts is mentioned, anything which is mentioned in the Quran, I have to interpret it according to the fundamentals of the teachings of did we get this now? So, let's let's go back. Alaikum salam. Okay. Okay. Zamakhshiri says what? Who's going to read it? Anybody? Anybody else? No. No. Not nobody else. You don't want to. You cannot read it, can you? Why are you shy? So, so okay. modest, you know. So, right. The confusion referred to here is a consequence of interpreting the allegorical verses in an arbitrary manner. Yeah. The Zamakhshiri, especially pointing out that, yes, the, the verse will say that Muteshabihat means, by definition, they are allegorical. So they need to be interpreted. Right? Zamak Shari says, be careful. Be careful. You cannot interpret these verses arbitrarily. What does it mean? So we don't, we don't find um, a further explanation. But he is warning us, you cannot, we should not interpret these verses, these uh, allegorical verses, arbitrarily. Okay, I have a good intention. I am trying to understand the Quran, right? And the uh, Quran uh, mentions about something which I feel it must be something, he must mean something else, right? He cannot really, the God, the creator God, cannot really tell me, for example, look at the moon, yes? 
uh, I looked at the moon. Just like that. Look at the moon. Okay. I looked at the moon. Good. I said, you, you obeyed my rule. What happened? Nothing. I looked at the moon. But of course, if God asks me to look at the moon, I have to interpret this verse within the capacity of the speaker. The speaker is the creator of the moon. And the, the creator of the moon is says, look at the moon, which means I am going to reveal something to you through the existence of the moon, you have to extract this meaning from it. It means look at the moon as a sign to understand me. Right? So the Mahsiri says, Do you cannot really interpret this, uh, these uh, allegorical verses arbitrarily, but we have to go further and understand. How can I not interpret the, uh, the Muteshabihat uh, allegorical verses arbitrarily? How can I not do that? So we, we have to go back to the previous uh, slide which said, definitely you have to interpret the allegorical verses according to the fundamentals, so, uh, teachings of the fundamentals of the Quran, which is giving me the news about something which I don't know. Right? About something which I don't know. It means <coughs> beyond this universe. It means what this universe refers to, points to, functions as a sign to. Right? It's very simple, very easy to understand. But we have to put the verses, fundamentals and allegorical verses in their right location. Usually the confusion comes from uh, when you, when you uh, read some books, they, they muddle up. I had very pro uh, quite, uh, you know, difficulties in really uh, not messing up the things. I said, what is fundamental? What is allegorical? When you really define properly, it works perfectly. So when the Quran says, look at the moon, I say, I have to look at the moon to understand the main purpose of the speech of God in the Quran. What is? Teaching himself to me. Teaching what I don't know. So when I look at the moon as a sign. So I will study the moon, yes. As I study the moon, I will see the qualities in the existence of the moon. Right? The qualities in the existence of the moon will point to the qualities, the absolute qualities of their existence or the source of their existence. Did you get it? So when I say, the moon is beautiful, I love it. <coughs> okay. <coughs> it is beautifully created. So the creator of the moon is a beautiful creator. Mm. What? That's why the creator of the moon is asking me to look at the moon. We say it's very meaningful. It's the, it is perfectly balanced between whatever the uh, solar system uh, uh, tells us. Ah, the creator is the one who gives existence the perfect balance in the creation. He is the source of the balance. That's, why, that's what I am expected to drive from my looking at the moon. Otherwise, there would be no meaning, no purpose in the speech of God or mentioning, God's mentioning uh, the moon to me. Did, 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 is that clear now? It's very, it's <coughs> very important. So, uh, the time, I don't know if you would want to uh, cover that later. But um, like, if, if it's possible for you to give us an example of how like one verse you found in some of the books or whatever, 
to have been interpreted in a wrong way no. and then... I, I'm sorry. I am not a to criticize people. No, I don't mean it that <laughs> no. way. I just no, 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 no. Like when you see, establish your mind first, that set down, is that you have to be very comfortable. So look at it, and you can see some, some uh, book, get a book, there are lots of books in the, uh, you know, shelves. Get them and look at them and see whether they are consistent or not. That's your duty. But first, you have to be comfortable. All right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, sister wanted to ask a question. When you look at the moon and, and then you see it's beautiful, then no. you say that. So, so, the so, I cannot understand you. I don't know why. Maybe I'm an old guy, so I don't really <laughs> hear properly. Or you may r really uh, uh, raise your. When you said the moon is beautiful, right? Hmm. You said the moon is beautiful, because that's what you're saying, the creator? Excuse me, I can understand somebody speaking here. No, no. Can you, the, the moon is beautiful, and? The creator is beautiful, or the... No, the, the creator... The creator creates beautiful. He, the creator has given the beauty to the moon, so the creator is a beautiful creator. It means he is a... He, he is in his act of creation, manifests beauty at the same time. He doesn't create in lump, makes it beautiful. That son of whatever he created, made it beautiful. Right? Made it beautiful. It means the source of beauty is, since you asked the question, the source of beauty that we see in this world is, not the moon itself, the creator of the moon. What? Right? What's beautiful? That's how we interpret it. It's not difficult. Right? It's not difficult to interpret as long as you locate the verses which are mutashabihat, which are muhkyam. Right? So, uh, can you please read the following one? Interpretation that will? Mm hmm. You? Yeah. No, 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 you, you, because I know you are awake. <laughs> okay. Interpretation that will has two meanings. So we are going to, we are going to come to this that will. That's why you know, the Quran will talk about Okay. Yeah. In, in order to, co uh, to cause confusion, to interpret the text not according to the essence of the book. This is blamed in the Qur'an. Are we clear here? The, the statement is quite clear, but are you satisfied? Yeah? In order to cause confusion, fitna in Arabic, uh, to interpret the text according to, <coughs> and not according to the essence of the Qur'an. Right? If you read a book, for example, uh, talking about, uh, for example, uh, and I, I start talking about, oh, you know, don't you look at the uh, camel, how it was created. If, if I start making the real interpretation, right, saying that, it, Ibil means female camel. Okay. No, male camel. No, all right. A baby camel. No, so what? So what? What am I talking about now? Do what is the purpose of the purpose of God in mentioning the camel to me? So getting involved into the information about the essence of the camel itself is pointless. We are not using the camel as a sign to prove, to in demonstrate <coughs> who the source of existence of camel is. So look at the camel. Whether it is female or male, whatever, look at it and try whatever the camel you know, to see. You know, I haven't seen the camel, but I have a goat. 
But now look at it. Look at it. So it says, don't you see the God for you now? Because you are not seeing the camel. Now you see the, uh, the God. Okay, camel or God, doesn't matter. Kefe Khulika. How it was created. So investigate the creation. How it came into existence. How can it come into existence? How? Huh? You have to make and volumes of volumes of books of, of studies about how a camel is coming into existence. There is no end. One hundred volumes are uh, volumes of books are not enough to explain how a camel comes into existence. In order to what? In order to understand, realize that. All the qualities in the existence of a camel, how they are signs, functioning as signs, to their creator. So, we can interpret this verse by studying the camel in order to understand the qualities of its creator. That's the purpose of the Quran mentioning about the camel. Right? Can you imagine that God is talking about the essence of that particular camel? Whether this camel was like the story about the children of Israel saying that you know, when they are asked to slaughter the calf, they say, what kind of calf is it? How old is it? Which color is it? On a female or male or whatever? What are they doing? You are missing the point. They are confusions. So we have to interpret the alleg allegorical <coughs> verses according to the essence of the book. We have to ask the question. If you do that and start reading the book, your word will change. So your <laughs> word will change. Right? Carry on. The second point. Would you like? Maybe, can you maybe can, somebody can you see it? No. No, okay. Sorry. Somebody from here? Okay. Uh, trying to understand the text according to the essence of the book. This is encouraged in the Quran. Those who are deeply rooted in knowledge and who are endowed with insight. No. Uh, so we will come there. But we, we are preparing our minds now, okay? So it doesn't mean that we should never, never try to understand the Quran at all. Because Quran is encouraging the reader to be one of those who are deeply rooted in knowledge and who are endowed with insight. So we have to be one of these people. How we will come here, inshallah. Okay, let's let's go. Did we get so far? Okay. Anybody else? Another one? Do you know how to read in English? Huh? Please go ahead. The rule <laughs> is that any interpretation of the allegorical verses with the Shabihat, which goes against the first kind, fundamental verses should be rejected absolutely and only that interpretation should be given credence which is not against the fundamental verses. Fundamental verses are muhkamat. So, we, do, we, do we get now, so far? Is the, is the statement clear on any question, any doubt, not, not, you know, some blurred idea, cloudy idea? What does it mean? Or I don't really understand. No, must be very clear. Everybody's mind must be very clear and heart must be satisfied. Do you understand now? The rule is that interpretation of the allegorical verses, which we or the Quran says, with the Shabi, huh? which goes against the first kind, fundamental verses, fundamental verses, should be rejected. Any interpretation which is which has nothing to do with, nothing to do with. The main teaching, the main purpose of God who speaks to me. I'm saying, why, why, what are you talking about? 
I don't want to uh, mention the name, the some uh, historically we know that some people use their um, sources or uh, their uh, text, their uh, book, <clears throat> only for the sake of information and interpret the things for their own sake, not for the sake of understanding the qualities of their source, how they point to the qualities of their source. That's why we call them, no, no, if someone tries to, uh, or uh, talks about, for example, the Quran says, Tabbat yada abi lahabdi wa tabba. So, uh, you know, uh, how they say, let the hands of Abu Lahab wither away. And it really did. Okay. Who is Abu Lahab? Who is his father? How old he was? What he did? Oh, excuse me, what are you doing? What are you doing? Abu Lahab is a man here, yeah, but look at the quality. Why God says this man did something wrong and how he describe, uh, describes this man? Why are they talking about the man's height, wealth, something like this? Why? But the Quran we said, Ma akhna anhu maluhu wa ma kasab. What? His wealth did not bring any benefit for for, uh, for him. And whatever he acquired from this world, this man has no benefit from it, had no benefit from it. It means, <coughs> do you think God is talking about a particular man for the sake of the man? Of course there is a man. He is an example. What? Wh what I have to study about this man only for the purpose of the speech of God. Why God is telling me about this man? But what was his father's name? Abu Lahab. What was his name? How was he famous in Mecca? Was he from Quraysh or on another tribe? Excuse me. What are you talking? It has to be. It has to be understood within the purpose of the speech of the Creator, within his own capacity. God is speaking about a man and saying that you should never be like him. So you have to look at directly the qualities of the man, which is disliked or refuted by the Creator. Don't talk about the man's something you know, qualities, or in this world, uh, maybe his uh, ancestors, or his, which uh, tribe he was belonged, belong, he belonged to. Excuse me, none of my business. Talk, tell me about his qualities, which is rejected by God in order to understand the will of God in speaking about every life. So you won't feel any you won't have any uncomfortable feeling when the Quran says, you know, when, he, when they say, curse Abu Lahab. Who is being cursed because of his qualities? These qualities are to be cursed, Quran says. You have to, talk, you have to think now. These qualities, are these qualities worth to be cursed or not? Think about it and look for these qualities, not the man himself. If you concentrate on the man, if you are as if you are concentrating on the moon, as our example said when Imam Khalid comes, says, it is nine o'clock, brothers, sisters. I say, no, not yet. We have one minute more. One more minute. Or the tenth, uh, no, it is not nine o'clock. This clock is not right or wrong. Because it doesn't mean that it is nine o'clock to let you know the time. He asks you to leave the room. 
He never be the God and never means that particular man. He created him. He is talking about the qualities of this room, this man, not the room, <laughs> this man, which is not liked by the creator and telling you that you should not have these qualities. So talk about the qualities of this man, which is disliked, right? Never talk about the man. Isn't that right? So we say, we should be judgmental, yes. You're all right. But God is judgmental. God is judging about a particular man. No. <clears throat> no. You understand? Not to cause any confusion. So, Meteshabiyat, but Abu Lahab, everybody knows Abu Lahab is, is a man existed in this world. No. When he says Abu, Abu Lahab, I would say, God never means that particular man. Because I know this man, he definitely means something. This verse is definitely allegorical. And this allegorical verse definitely needs to be interpreted according to the fundamentals of the teachings of the Quran. That is obvious. Anything beyond this, less than this, will be wrong. To me. I'm, I'm quite satisfied about this. That's why I'm excited to share it with you. So, if any interpretation of the allegorical verses which goes against the first kind, which is uh, fundamental verses, should be rejected. Absolutely. And only that interpretation should be given credence, credence, <coughs> which is not against the fundamental verses. Right? Are we, are we satisfied now? So, shall we move? Are we all out of time? Okay. Dr. Ali, uh, just a quick question. So, so in that area uh, of Ulahab, so... For God, example, yes. there are others also, Zaid and Aisha's necklace uh, on any woman coming and complaining. Uh, the prophet about her husband, as usual. <laughs> yes. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, and uh, then Moses, Jesus. It doesn't mean that these things are allegorical. doesn't mean that they didn't exist. No, 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 no. For example, when God says, look at the moon, it doesn't mean that moon didn't exist. But the purpose in mentioning these or the things or objects or historical events is uh, to be interpreted according to the fundamental <coughs> verses. Okay, to teach me something about the ghayb, something that I don't know. In that case, would that might be, for example, in the case of Abu Lahab, hmm. what God is like, what he likes, and we can be what he dislikes? Okay. Yeah, that's, that's obvious, isn't it? He's giving an example to me, in order to teach me his own preferences, which is unknown to me. He discloses this by giving the example of Abu Lahab, which existed in this world, in this world but in order to disclose his liking and his dislike. Not talking about the men and judging about the men and teaching me, you have to judge, judge as well. You know, since, uh, since uh, God said Abu Lahab uh, is to be cursed, so I can see some people like Abu Lahab and judge about them that they are to be cursed. You are to be cursed as well. No, 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 no. It is complete misunderstanding of the purpose of the Quran. That's very, very, very important. We have to interpret. Okay. Now, it becomes easy. Who is going to read? The following verses are. Vrind, <coughs> please, we should waste time, please, um, go ahead. I'll so give so the okay, okay, okay. I, I just want somebody else to yeah, read that. Sure. Sorry, why don't you read? You are always reading. You don't want to read? Not okay. Arabic, so English I can read. Sorry, okay. <laughs> In English you will read, you promised that you will read. <laughs> Arabic, you read. Yeah, Bismillah. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ 
فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله وما يعلم تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله إلا الله أوكي نعم إنجلس <laughs> Not only those hearts are given to swerving from the truth, who after that part of the book which has been expressed an allegory, seeking out confusion and seeking to give it their own interpretation. But none save God knows its interpretation. No. Now, uh, I know you are tired. Time is getting late. And you have already been under a very... It's slightly different approach, so it may puzzle some of you who are used to reading uh, in another way, the Quran. So, but we have to be extremely awake now. Look at the last word. But none say God knows it is interpretation. What does it mean? So we cannot know the interpretation of the allegorical verses. Right? So can I be the uh, devil's advocate here? If I don't know the interpretation of it, excuse me, God, why bother to tell me? But I don't know, you know it. Okay, you know, you speak to yourself. <laughs> well, there's, there's something. Yeah? Isn't that right? If, if only God knows, and I have to, uh, I have to be, uh, I have to be aware that only God knows the interpretation. Mm. As far as me, as the reader, but we have to be careful here, as the addressee of the speech. Is concerned as far as I am concerned. I have to say, this is an allegorical verse. Yes, but don't forget which verses are allegorical. Which verses are allegorical? Right? All right. For example, the classical example, very famous. Everybody who studies in this Kuliyeshari or something is. Uh, Standard uh, divinity schools or theology schools, they say, Yedullah who fell guide. Yedullah, God's hand. Hand? Hand. Alright? It is definitely allegorical. Why? Because God is not talking about the hand. I know. He must mean something related to Him. Right? It means something to do with His qualities. Right? So, this is Muteshabihat. And God says, no one knows the meaning of it except me. Okay? If I don't know, if you know, why do you tell me this? Right? So, what does it mean? Who can guess what this verse means? The part of this verse means. Any guess? But be careful, very careful. God says, I know. Which means, you have to look at the Muteshabihat for within my knowledge. Means, God's knowledge. Means, refer it to God's capacity. Never miss this point. Refer it to God's capacity, which is, Pointing to the absolute. That's why we said when we interpret them, we have to interpret them according to the fundamentals of the Quran. Do you understand that? Very important. That's very important. So only God knows means. I don't know. God knows means you have to refer it to God, the capacity of God's knowledge. It means to the absolute source. To the absolute source. Otherwise, since I don't know, and God knows, why do you tell me? He says, for example, again, go back to the 
uh, example of Imam Khalid. <laughs> Comes here at 9 o'clock. It is 9 o'clock. And we all look at him. What do you mean? You don't understand? I know what I mean. Which means, think about what I said within my capacity. Do you understand? It means I am the director of this institution. I have the authority to keep you here or you let you stay here or go, take you out. Think about the meaning of this phrase within my own capacity. We will say, excuse me, sir, let's say we don't know Imam Khalid. All right? Somebody said, oh God, if we don't know, he will say, ladies and gentlemen, it is nine o'clock. We will say, excuse me, sir, can you please let us know who you are? Yes. He says, I am the caretaker of this building. Ah, what do you mean? If I am telling the time, it means I want you to leave the room. Don't you understand? I have the authority to let you in or not let you in. So within his authority, I have to understand. So when God says, no one knows their interpretations that will, but God knows means you have to interpret it within the context of God's authority, right? Within the context of <clears throat> the speaker's authority, right? If someone says, I know what he means, and try, starts interpreting not within the authority or capacity of the creator, it will be fitna. It means wrong. Confusion. Do you understand? If anything in this world mentioned in the Quran which is not interpreted within the capacity of its creator is fitna. It means wrong. It's not doing justice to the Quran, the word of God. This is very, very important and I'm sure need to you. Must be. Now it took me decades to understand this. Pointing out why, what does it mean, what does it mean, why it says this. So, alhamdulillah, I'm very, maybe I may be wrong, I cannot claim that, but I'm very satisfied it, and see the consistency within the teachings of the Qur'an and within the, within the uh, structure of the word, verse itself. It goes well. It makes sense. Otherwise it is, God knows, we don't know, so leave it. Why, why do you think God is stupid to tell you something that which, which is not useful for you? God is speaking uh, something and no one understands that he keeps speaking. Uh, what do you think God is, not, doesn't know what he's doing? Sometimes he says something that no one understands. Hmm? But of course, definitely we have to understand that only God knows means, ah, I have to interpret it within the capacity of the absolute creator. So every mutashabihat, every allegorical verse must be interpreted within the capacity of it is absolute source. Are we satisfied there? So it says, now, now let's go over the text now, the Quran itself with the English translation. Now those whose hearts are given to swerving from the truth go after that part of the book, allegorical verses, which has been expressed in allegory, and seeking out confusion and seeking to give it their own interpretation without referring to the capacity of God. Do you understand? Without referring 
or trying to understand the, uh, the allegorical verses pointing to the absolute source of their existence. That's why those people talk about the things themselves for the sake of themselves. For example, uh, what was the verse? It's a beautiful verse. It calls about Misbah. Allah Nur Samawati Wal No, no, Misbah. Uh, is the sun. Sun. Sun is the Misbah. Sorry? In Surah Gaf, the beautiful name of the sun mm. behind? No, no, no. Okay. Me. Let's talk about what we know. I, 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 I wanted to give another example for, for the... But when the Quran says... Washam um, Sutejri, Limustakar <coughs> Laha. All right? Okay. Talks about the sun, which is... Running, okay, uh, to its orbit, uh, orbit or within its orbit, whatever you, uh, however you, uh, we, are, we are not studying that now, okay. And somebody uh, tries uh, speaks about the size of the sun, how big is it, how far is it, how many millions of uh, miles away from the Earth, and how the helium, uh, whatever the, they name uh, this uh, substance, explodes and never refer it to its creator and never understand all the qualities he, is, he or she sees in the existence of the sun <coughs> pointing to its creator and his will and his decision, saying, only studying it for the sake of sun, the sun, for the sake of the sun, the, the giving information, all the you know books which uh, speak about the sun. We, you may have uh, lots of volumes of books talking about the sun. Eh? What? How is it happening? What are they doing? The Quran says their heart. Yeah. Their hearts are given to swerving. Mm, from the truth, and they want to go after that part of the which has been expressed in Allegra, seeking out confusion. But Quran is talking about the sun in order to teach us the qualities of its creator, and the man is talking about the sun for its own sake, for its own qualities. Just its own quality says that the Quran, for example, the sun is how many miles away? Millions of miles away from the earth? Give us a number. I will say, okay, so what? What shall I do? None of my business. Why do you think God is talking about the sun? Right? Just to measure the distance between the earth and the sun itself? Or, in this measurement, seeing the mizan measurement, given <coughs> to, the, to the sun by, the, by its creator and the wisdom behind it in order to understand how wise the creator is. Okay, <coughs> that is the knowledge of God. Do you understand? That is okay. But... If it is, if any explanation doesn't help me understand or develop or expand, my knowledge of God is swerving from the truth. Right? Does it make sense? Shall we move forward? Inshallah. Okay. Okay. So, what, that, what did they say? Someone who's going to read it? Somebody else in Arabic? Anybody who is comfortable with Arabic who has never read today? No? 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 Okay. Tara. 
والراسخون في العلم يقولون آمنا به كل من عند ربنا آمنا به كل من عند ربنا ده ده ترانسليشن اوكي Hence, those who are deeply rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it, the whole of it is, sorry, the whole of it is from our Lord. From our Lord. It means, muhkamat and mutashabihat, all kinds of verses are from our Lord, which means, they all disclose who my Lord is, muhkamat, teaches me who my Lord is and allegorical verses also teach me who my Lord is. <coughs> right? So that I can reach, I, I reach my Lord. Did you get it? So if someone is who are deeply rooted in knowledge means they are sincere, they are consistent, right? They are consistent, they are truth seekers, truth seekers, they will say every verse in the Quran reveals to me who my Lord is, teaches me who my Lord is. Not only muhkamat, mutashabihat as well. So all the speech of God is to teach me who my Lord is. Right? It, but someone may understand it very, in a very simple way, saying that those, those, those who are deeply rooted in knowledge say, we believe in it, it means we don't think about it, but he said, deeply, who are deeply rooted in knowledge? He said, we don't know. This is not deeply, in, deeply rooted in knowledge, this is ignorance. <coughs> yeah? If uh, someone says, the whole of it from our Lord, we don't know what it means, this is from God, and I don't understand. Excuse me, how can you be a rasikhuna fil ilm if you say, I don't know? <laughs> and the Quran speaks nonsense. Quran doesn't teach anything and says, I don't know. We don't, we don't know. He, God knows, God knows. <coughs> why, does, why does God speak to you then? How can you how can you be a person who is deeply rooted in knowledge saying that God is speaking nonsense? Because it doesn't mean anything. Purposeless. Can we understand it saying that we shouldn't interpret these verses? It is impossible. It is impossible. It goes against it. Definition of the speech of God, the word of God. Yeah? At the beginning it says, Huwellidhi enzele, enzele al-kitaba? Huwellidhi enzele, huwellidhi enzele alayka al-kitaba. Huwellidhi enzele alayka al-kitaba, it is he who has revealed the book to you, in order to teach you himself, who he is, right? In order to teach you what you don't know, what you cannot know. The Quran describes it, I am the guide for human beings, for those who speak. Those people who are those people who are uh, deeply rooted in knowledge, it means they really know the heart of the matter. Right? They say everything in the Quran is mentioned in order to teach who my Lord is. Right? He said, of it's from our Lord. It means <coughs> Lord is speaking, disclosing himself to me to teach who he is. Otherwise, speaking to me and I don't understand. What does it mean? Of course, this verse needs to be understood within the definition of the Qur'an itself. Definitely. Right? Let's finish it. Insha'Allah. Okay? Anybody? 
وانا يتذكروا وما يتذكر الا اولو الالباب اوكي ذا مينينج از اوبيت اوبيت نون تيكس ذيس تو هارت سيف ذوس هو ار اندوت وذ انسايد ات مينز ريلي فيري سيمبلي اف يو دونت باي اتنشن تو ذيس ديسكريمينيشن اوف ذيس اور ذيس ديسكريمينيشن ديسكريبشن اي ام سوري ذيس ديسكريبشن اوف الجوريكال فيرسز اند فاندامنتال فيرسز ذات اف يو تيك ذيس يو ار اولو الالباب ات مينز يو جات ذا بوينت Yeah, you got the point now. But if you don't take this, if you don't really understand, if you don't really try to interpret the allegorical verses according to God's knowledge, it means according to the capacity of the speaker in the Quran, disclosing his qualities to me, if you are not doing this, you are not Ulul Al-Bab. But if you are doing this, You got that. But Ulul Elbab means he is translated in those, those who are in those with inside. It means really you got the gist of the matter. Now you understood. Now you can understand what I am talking in the Quran. If you don't do that, you will miss it. Did you get it? Inshallah. Right? Any question? It is, uh, yeah. What is the difference be between Allah and Rabbina. Oh, I mean, we are not talking here. But of in, course, in, there in, are different. In, yeah. In this ayah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But, well, the previous ayah, you mean this one. Yes, I mean, yes, 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 When what, let's put it very, very simple, very simple, <coughs> uh, you know, in a generalization. Rab means the one who educates. Yeah, it means makes the things more and more and more perfect. Yeah, for example, this father is the rub of this child. She's. Uh, he is trying to um, help her develop. In the creation, the creation of the universe is never static. Stat static. It is all changing. When the, the uh, creation changes, we see each in each change, there is a perfection. It means making one type of creation into another type of creation where God's names, God's attributes are manifested more. So it, that's why we are given all these universe, uh, give, the, the universe has been created in order to understand that the, that the universe itself has been taken care of, sustained by the one who is really taking care of everything in the perfect way. So the perfection of the creation means point to the, pointing to the perfect qualities of its creator. When you look at the universe is continuously changing, coming into existence, is the manifestations of the name of God's name, Rab. This aspect, it means whatever you see in this world, in the Rabbina, the one who is creating this world in an ever-changing conditions, ever-changing situation, or in this, uh, as we see it, there is a purpose in it is continuously being changed. In each act of creation, we see another manifestation of the absolute qualities of the creator. This, this aspect of the existence is the manifestations of the rububi, right? Not only, for example, creating something. 
and human <coughs> existence to it, and it is static. No, 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 there's no such thing. The creator is Rab as well. It brings up, 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 until, but human beings, for example, from the very fetus, a baby, a young person, child, and a young person, old, etc., you know, middle age, old, and die. A, all the lifespan, you see the endless degrees of manifestations of the names, the qualities of our creator. So this is rububiyah, we are being under the, the terbiyah. This is a perfection of, of the, uh, of the, uh, the tasarrufat, what is in, 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 in English? Anybody? Tasarruf, um, manipulating or controlling. controlling, controlling our existence. In this tasarruf, there is no, nothing repeated exactly the same. Rab means continuously changing and manifesting his qualities because his qualities are definitely absolute. So uh, in order to reveal his absolute qualities, we have to see and we have to observe the continuously changing manifestation. If your power is limited, what do you do? You do something up to a point and stop. But if the source, the power of the source is unlimited, you never stop. The changing of the universe, continues the changing of the universe. So that is why Kulle Yawmin Huafi Sha'in means definitely he is always within a near manifestation of disclosing his qualities. This aspect of the creation can be understood Rububiyah as Rab. So uh, God is the proper name in this context. So the, 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 people, uh, the people who are, the, uh, certain people who are those who are deeply rooted in knowledge, we believe in it, and the whole of it is from our Lord, means whole of the teachings of the Quran is to educate us with no exception, right? That's what we understand, but it doesn't mean that the, what we understood is, uh, understood is the only way of understanding it. That's how, so far, how we understand. Inshallah, we will develop, we will pray more in order to uh, have or reach a better understanding. Is we'll try, we will try. This is the beginning. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Inshallah, we will uh, carry on. Another subject next week, next Wednesday. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Subhanaka la ilma lana illa ma'allamtana innaka anta al-alim al-hakim. Wa akhra da'wahum an alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen al-fatiha.